Hey folks, it's been a little while. It's good to see you again. My name's Callahan. Welcome back to the garage. And today we're going to do a little shop update. Everything that's been going on and what's currently going on. So stick around. All right, folks, welcome back to Callahan's Garage. My name's Callahan. And today we're just gonna do kind of a shop update and take a look at everything that's going on. We got a little work we're gonna get done. Um, but it's summer, it's hot. And for those of you that don't know, I also have mad lower back issues that have bothered me for like half my life now. Uh, I had spinal surgery back in 2019. And this summer's just been kind of hit and miss, you know, as my back's been bothering me off and on all summer. So I really hadn't been able to get out here and get as much work done as I wanted to. Um, as you can see, you know, the hearse is still sitting here unfinished. We did get the front end finished up in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, please go check it out. But the rear end is still completely apart. So we'll get on that, you know, at some point in the near future. But we've also got some other stuff going on today. So we've got my trusty old OBS Power Stroke Ford sitting here. We got a little upgrade and some maintenance we need to get done on this thing before we take it on a big long road trip here in the next couple weeks. And then you can also see the lovely big red fire truck sitting back here in the background. That's a whole nother story and we'll have a full video on that coming up soon. And then we have yet another classic green Wolfsburg edition Volkswagen convertible. So my wife decided that one just wasn't enough. We needed two. So we've got this. We'll probably work on it a little bit today. So then in addition to having not one, but two Volkswagen convertibles, we also managed to acquire not one, but two air-cooled vehicles. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know, I post kind of some day-to-day -day updates on there. I recently acquired a whole collection of air-cooled parts. Uh, not quite a horde status, but you know, a bunch of engine parts, a couple of engines, all kinds of different stuff. And these two vehicles came with the deal. So we've got this early swing axle pan, woods buggy kind of deal. And then we've got this late sixties Baja Beetle. The Baja came with a full fiberglass kit, super cool, you know, old school kit. Um, and I've actually got enough parts with the deal to put both of these cars together. So I'm not totally sure what we're gonna do with them yet. We may put them together in a future video, but for now they're just kind of taking up space. All right, so then over here in the house garage, we've still got the Razor sitting here. I took the engine for this over to my engine builder. He's currently working on that. So this thing's kind of back burnered until we get the engine back. And then we've also got my wife's second classic green Wolfsburg edition Volkswagen convertible. So this is the car that we're gonna be road tripping with up to Wildwood, New Jersey here in just a couple of weeks. So we're going up there for the second year in a row for Roots Classic. So if you're in that area, it's gonna be an absolutely killer event. It's all pre 2K. So, you know, air-cooled stuff, Mark 1s, Mark 2s, Mark 3s, absolutely killer event, you know, weekend long, gonna be a good time. We're really looking forward to it again. So we got some work to do to this thing before we head on up there and we'll have that in a future video. All right, so today we're gonna to get some work done on the trusty old tow rig out here. So this is my 97 F250. I've owned this truck for eight, nine years now. Uh, it's the longest I've owned any vehicle. Um, it's the last year old body style. It's the 7.3 Power Stroke diesel. Um, so, you know, super reliable truck. It's always there when I need it. I really rarely drive it anymore, but you walk out here, it cranks up first time every time. So, like I said, here in the next couple weeks, we're towing the convertible up to Roots Classic. We're gonna drive this thing 13, 14 hours, something like that, all the way up there. So we got a few things I wanna do before, before we make that trip. So we need to do a transmission service. We're gonna do a rear end service. And then I've also got some upgraded steering parts for this thing. So I did the Dana 60 axle swap on this thing several years ago, did rear shackle kit, super duty springs in the rear, you know, really upgraded the suspension overall, but the steering has still kind of been a weak point. Um, so I did a, uh, the redhead steering gear in this thing a few years ago, and it's still just like the steering's just got a little shake in it, you know, a little slop in it. So I ordered the upgraded Dana 60 steering kit from Carrot Customs, all big heavy duty stuff. So we're gonna get that in here today, and hopefully, you know, it really improves the steering and the feel of the truck. Okay, so first things first, we need to get under here and do some disassembly. Um, 
like I said, I did the Dano 60 swap on this several years ago. Um, I used the rear shackle kit from PMF Suspension. I've also got their dual steering stabilizer on here. So I've been you know, pretty pleased with this kit overall. I got tens of thousands of miles on it with no issues. Um, I'm not sure if, this, if the steering stabilizer kit is gonna be able to work with our, with our new steering components. You know, we may have to get some new U-bolts, I think. So we'll kind of pull this off and see if it's gonna work or not. So we'll get all this disassembled and we can start putting some new parts in. Okay, so we got the old steering out and you can see there's really not much to this. Basically just a long tie rod with an adjuster and a tie rod in. Same thing with the drag link, just one long piece, adjuster, tie rod in. So the new kit is basically supposed to take out this slot that exists in the drag link. Um, it's got heavier duty end links on the tie rod and the drag link as well. So our tie rod ends are still pretty tight. Um, this, this end link on the, sway, on the drag link is a little loose. And then this rod end on the drag link up here that goes onto the steering, uh, the pitman arm is super loose too. So we get all new components for all of this. It's all a little beefier and heavier duty and hopefully that'll take all the, the shimmy and the slop out of our front steering. And then another thing you can see, I didn't jack this up or pull the wheels off or anything. Um, you can access all of this, you know, just from underneath the front of the truck. Um, and the theory is, you know, if I just leave all this in place, we can adjust all of our new components and put them into the existing place and our alignment should stay close enough to, you know, drive this thing to the alignment shop and get it all checked and squared away without putting any wear on our, our tires or anything. Uh, so we'll get everything adjusted and slapped up in here. All right, so we've got all of our new parts put together here. I've got everything adjusted, you know, measured stem to stem from our old setup, set our new setup exactly the same measurements. So we should be pretty close in all of our alignment specs and everything should go in there pretty easily but you can see you know these new components are much beefier so the tubing on our new tire on the drag link is much more substantial same thing on all of our end links you know they're much beefier we also have these specific boots on our tie rod ends that keep this from deflecting at all so it's going to keep everything much more stable and much more in control you know through the whole range of the steering motion so now we can go put this in the truck
Okay, so we got everything wrapped up on the front end up here, all our new steering components in. Pretty straightforward, um, pretty simple job. Um, looks pretty good. Our, my steering stabilizer kit is definitely not gonna clear with our new upsized link bars. So we'll see if we can get that to work later on down the road. Currently, I'm not super worried about it. I wanna see how this thing drives without it as well. Um, Everything went together nice and smoothly, got all of our adjustments fine-tuned, so it went together nice and easy. So hopefully our alignment specs are still super close. But either way, we're going to go get this thing up on an alignment rack and get it checked over and make sure it's totally good to go. So there's only one thing I really ran into putting this together. So each link bar has a cinch bolt on the end of it. So like we've got one on each end of the drag link and then one on each end of the tie rod. And the kit came with a handful of washers, which I assumed, you know, went on these bolts. However, once I got it all together, I realized there at A, we were two washers short, so you know that was a little confusing. But after getting this all together, I realized that the washers are not, they were not the correct diameter for these bolts, but they were the correct diameter for these stems on our end links. So when I tightened up the end links, the castle nut here tightened down and our, our hole for the cotter pin ended up being above the castle nut. So you have to put two of these washers underneath the castle nut in order to get the castle nut to land in the right spot so you can get your cotter pin in there. And we have one, two, three of those end links that you have to do that on. So we had six washers total and they are for the end link stems rather than these link bar cinch bolts. Okay, so we got all our front end stuff done. Next thing we're gonna bang out a transmission service and a rear end service, so just simple fluid and filter on the transmission. And the rear end, we'll just take the cover plate off, drain all the fluid out and you know reseal it up with some fresh fluid. So let's get into that. Okay, so like I said, our transmission service is gonna be pretty straightforward, just fluid and filter change. Um, so on these trucks, your transmission fluid doesn't have a drain bung or anything in it. So if you have your original pan on here, you have to you know kind of loosen all the pan bolts and just let the fluid come out of one corner and make a huge mess or, so I've already done two transmission services on this truck and I have welded a drain bung into the bottom of my pan so this makes it much easier. So I'll be able to drain all the fluid out and then we'll drop the pan, make sure the gasket's still in good shape, change the filter, and we'll be good to go. So while this is draining, I'm going to go ahead and pop the cover off of the rear end. We'll get all the gear oil draining out of that too. Okay, so before I drain all the gear oil out of the rear end, I am going to make sure that I can get the fill plug out because the fill plug on these rear ends is in the actual rear end casting. It's not in the cover. So make sure I can get it loose. That way we don't get in a scenario where I drain all the gear oil out of it and then I don't have any way to refill it. So. We'll check that, then we'll drain all the fluid out. All right, we've got our drain plug out, so now we can just pop these bolts out and start draining this thing.
All right, folks, well, truck's all wrapped up. We got our front end all done. We got our transmission, our rear end fully serviced. So we'll take this thing, we'll get an alignment done here in the next week or so, and it'll be good to go for our road trip. So that's about all I got for today. So in the next video, we'll get some work done on the convertible before we haul it all the way up to New Jersey for Roots Classic year two. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.